Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There are some unusual features that surround our planet known as Kordelewski clouds, and they exist in the Lagrange points created by the Earth-Moon system. So we have the L5 point, the L4 point. This is based on the gravitational force. So Earth has a very strong gravitational field. The Moon also has one, but you have these zones where gravity effectively diminishes greatly. And they were first observed back in the 60s, I believe. I think it's 1967 by Kordelewski himself. And they're this very transient phenomena. Uh, they've only been observed a few times, but they're confirmed in 2018 by the Royal British uh, Astronomical Society. They are filled with this complex dusty plasma, it's called, because you get a lot of dust in space. And dust will attract charge carriers like protons and electrons to it. And so as a result, it will uh, take on charge and if there's a whole bunch of these dust grains like nine billions but you know uncountable number of these dust grains in space they form these what are called dusty plasma clouds which can have a variety of interesting electromagnetic effects so we see that there are each side of the moon and we just had the full moon pass through the magneto tail during a solar storm impact so we see that the light here is on the Earth, so the sun is over here, right? So this would mean that the magnetic field stretches behind the Earth and the moon in that full moon position passes through. Well, we see that these clouds can either enter into that magnetotail zone before with the L4 cloud or after with the L5 cloud. I want to talk about auroral circuits really quick as it relates to Kordelewski clouds because there's an interesting kind of idea that I've had. This is by no means guaranteed but it's something interesting to think about. We know that there are these auroral circuits that exist, especially during more active storm conditions. So here we have the Earth and then A right there. This is like the ionosphere, which is made up of plasma, 1% plasma, it's the upper atmosphere, which means it has uh, conductivity to it and can host electric current. Then we also have these electric currents created by the solar wind that go into the auroral zone and we see here the thing that's helping connect the entire circuit together because if you if you have a break in any of this uh electric current then the circuit breaks is we have this plasma cloud there and for example that could be uh any sort of plasma body within the magneto tail and that could also be maybe a kordelewski cloud because that's also a plasma body if it's able to host an electric current then that could complete this circuit here we have a double layer and a double layer is very, uh, very, very simple. It's when you have a uh, plasma with a very high positive charge next to a zone of plasma very close together with a very high negative charge, which creates a very strong electric field gradient. Here we see that. We see this, this is E for electric field. Here we see it goes down and then it goes up. And this is like, uh, this is across time. So this is something traveling through that double layer, giving us this profile but this electric potential is very, very large. Across the entire circuit, it equalizes out, but in this very minor, uh, narrow zone, it's a very um, powerful electric field gradient, which can accelerate particles. So if you have this circuit flowing and current, you know, these particles flowing here, they hit that double layer, and they will then all of a sudden rain down into the earth, and that can trigger aurora. And this is especially active like during substorms and such. But one of the things that we have uh, found is that there's an increase in geomagnetic volatility. It's more likely to occur when the moon is in the full moon position. And here we see the magnetic field of the earth and we see the plasma contained in the magneto tail. And the moon is a large gravitationally rounded body. It's being hit by, by sunlight. So it develops a very powerful electric field gradient from its light side to its dark side. Right, positive charge here, negative charge there. That in and of itself is going to interact with the plasma and magneto tail, perhaps uh, amplify this auroral circuit. But we also uh, have uh, this data from 1874 to 1954 showing that geomagnetic uh, disturbances are just in general more common during that full moon phase and they're least common during the new moon when the moon is completely out of the magnetic field totally out it's actually kind of in front of the earth shielding it from solar wind so this is 80 years of data definitely worth paying attention to as a result 
And we even see that the, the, the most, the highest occurrences of geomagnetic storms is right here, slightly after that full moon phase. And then we see it ramping up there. We do get a spike there before the uh, first quarter moon, but in general, you have the highest amount of disturbance right here after that full moon phase. And well, if we go back here, we see the Kordelewski clouds. And so that would be roughly when one of these clouds is going to be in that magneto tail, perhaps that is better able to uh, complete this auroral circuit and therefore enhance any geomagnetic activity because geomagnetic activity and the aurora and therefore the magnetic field swings that register at the surface is all based on these electric circuits. And so the stronger the electric circuit, the more flow there is, the more current there is, and therefore the stronger the magnetic field swings that are generated. So interesting uh, side note I wanted to bring up about Kordelewski clouds and the auroral circuit and how they may be connected together. We really don't know that much about these. There's some very interesting ideas floating around as it relates to the Kordelewski clouds. You can read about that in A New Science of Heaven by Robert Temple. Um, he speculates that these are highly conscious plasma entities. So you can look into that if you want. But regardless, just as it relates to the kind of electromagnetic dynamics of our near Earth system, these may be bigger players than you may have otherwise realized. And our recent solar storm that we just had uh, is evidence for that because we have this solar storm right here that we just had, as we see with our real-time solar wind data. Um, but we, you know, it wasn't that, I mean, it was significant, but this is a pretty long duration and perhaps the full moon, you know, to subtly raise up that geomagnetic activity level a little bit more than it would have been otherwise.